All right, uh, less than a full 24 hours into owning something, as usual, I already had to rip apart. Uh, found the obligatory mouse nest that just happens to come with everything that I buy. Um, <laughs> but uh, as I figured, that is the root of all of the wiring problems that I've found uh, with this thing so far. So um, once I get this all cleaned up, uh, I'll go through. And there's, there's just a bunch of bare wires over here. I haven't actually taken a multimeter and tested anything, but um, and it's pretty obvious that <laughs> this is going to be uh, the cause of some of the wiring issues. Maybe not all of them, but um, it's to be expected. Overall, the dealer uh, that I bought this from did a good job cleaning it up. Uh, they went through and replaced all the fluids and filters for me. Um, which I think they just do that on all, on all of their used tractors, uh, which is nice. So that saved me a lot of time and probably, I mean, to be honest, a good $200, $250. So that's, that's pretty nice, which I'm sure they accounted for in the, in the price of the tractor, but uh, whatever. Um, you know, I, I, I wouldn't expect them to go through the whole thing and find something like this mouse nest. Um, I'm sure a lot of people would because, oh, it's a dealer. They're supposed to go through the whole thing and fix everything that's wrong with it. Well, yeah, but that's just not how it works. So... Um, you know, when you're buying something used, you just have to expect stuff like that, which is why I'm taking the time to go through this, uh, look for anything that they may have overlooked, and just, you know, give it the good quality tune-up that I feel it deserves, that I give all of my equipment. Um, you know, it's a it was a good dealership, a little, you know, countryside dealership, but um, kind of out in the middle of nowhere. They're real honest people, real good people. Um, they have a lot of good equipment there. Um, but like I said, I just wouldn't expect somebody to, you know, take a little... They sell all sorts of equipment there, and they've got tons of stuff for sale, but I wouldn't expect a dealer to go through and fix every little thing that's wrong with um, with every piece of equipment they have. And and I think the, the price reflected, um, you know, little issues like this. So, um, yeah, like I said, that's why I'm, I'm going, going through it and taking care of it. Um, so uh, whenever you buy anything used, I would just... I would expect stuff like that. Don't be surprised, you know, if you find find a mouse nest here or there or an, an oil leak that's unexpected. But um, anyway, that's what I'm doing today. Uh, I'm going to be trying something new. Um, so I don't, I mean, if, if you watch a lot of my videos, you'll notice that I don't typically film uh, a lot of the work as I'm doing it. And uh, to be honest, that's because I don't have a separate fancy camera like a lot of uh, YouTubers have. I just film stuff on my phone. And uh, when I'm out here in the shop working, I really like to listen to music. So my phone is usually connected to the stereo, and I'm uh, listening to music. But I'm also one of those people that uh, keeps all of their old phones. So I have a stockpile of phones laying around here, and I'm like, oh, hey, why don't I just use them for filming videos? So I'm going to try that. Um, if some of it gets cut off, I apologize. I don't know what the storage life is like on a lot of these old uh, iPhones that I have. But we're going to try it and see how it goes. Um, I figure... You know, instead of just doing little updates here and there, I'm sure a lot of people would actually like to see the work in progress. Um, and with that said, I'm going to just do a little quick walk around the tractor here, show you everything that I've done so far and everything that I'm planning on doing. Uh, so there's a few dents in the hood here. Um, I've popped a lot of them out. It's not going to look perfect. I don't expect it to look perfect. Um, but it looks better than it did already, and I spent like 10 seconds on it just popping a dent out. So... Um, I'm going to go through and clean up the front portion of it here. This is really the worst part of the hood. Um, I'll just try and knock all those dents out, smooth it out as best I can. Probably going to repaint it. Um, I won't be doing that anytime soon. It's still a little bit cold outside. Um, but it's, uh, you know, spring is in the air. Uh, I think all next week we have highs in the low 50s, so that'll be nice. Uh, we'll get the rest of the snow out of the yard here. Uh, side note. I did tow this thing home uh, on this trailer with my uh, Jeep Grand Cherokee. It actually tows fantastic. I was not expecting it to tow that well. Um, uh, trailer actually tows better loaded than it does empty. Um, I was going to get the truck out of the garage because uh, it did rain here and the salt is pretty much off the roads. Um, and I was going to tow it with that, but I just figured, ah, what the hell, I'll use the Jeep. So. Uh, anyway, moving on. To get to that mouse, ne mouse nest, um, you had to pull, I'll call it the dash, um, and that basically just required reaching up into the mouse nest, which was awesome, um, <laughs> and unplugging all the connections, and then 
um, pulling the steering wheel as well, which I kind of had to make a makeshift puller for. Um, obviously, I didn't make this part. This is just part of a gear puller that I have. Um, but then I just used chain uh, wrapped around these spokes on the wheel, uh, put some heat on the shaft, gave it a couple taps, and it popped right off. That was nice. Um, although there were a few choice words said. Um, the loader came off fairly easy. Um, I don't think I really took it off how you're supposed to take it off, but this just ended up being the easiest way. Um, I left the side brackets on and then just unpinned uh, the ram and the upper supports there. And then it, it, that was the way that I could get it to balance the best. And then um, the side supports there, I don't know what the right word is to call those, um, but anyway, on a 67 loader like this, they were just uh, pinned on um, down on the bottom there and then up at the front there. So they were really easy to come off uh, once the rest of the loader was blocked up like this. So um, I'm going to be going through and replacing all of the hydraulic lines on the loader. Um, just the soft lines, not the hard lines. The hard lines are in great shape. Um, once I do that... I will, I'm probably going to go through the bucket, clean it up. Um, somebody recently put a new cutting edge on it, and they've extended it, because the original bucket was actually pretty beat. Yeah, uh, so the original bucket only came out to this point, and then the original cutting edge stopped right about there. So everything from this point forward is added metal. Um, same thing on the sides, they've added this coming out to here. Um, so, like I said, bucket's not in great shape, but uh, the cutting edge on it is actually uh, fairly straight and relatively new, so that's kind of nice. Um, they did a halfway decent job welding it, welding it in there, um, but I'm going to go through and clean up all the crap like this, try and straighten out uh, all the dents in the top of the bucket there, and I think I'm going to get some clamp-on pallet forks for this. Um, I was going to try and um, get a uh, quick attach pin-on conversion for this, but I think the Deer 67 loader is narrower than a standard loader. Um, I think there might be a few companies out there that make um, pin-on quick attach systems for this loader, but the thing is, it's only got about a 750 pound capacity as it is, and with that um, quick attachment on there, it's going to bring the pivot point out almost another 8 inches, I think it is, and then if you factor in, like, you know, then adding the attachment itself, you're really kind of reducing the overall load that you can um, pick up with this loader. So, and I mean, not to mention, I don't have a full scale, you know, farm operation here or anything like that. I really don't have any need for a whole, you know, group of quick attach implements. I could really get by with just this bucket and um, the clamp on pallet forks because I'm, I mean, the pallet forks would be useful for a number of things, but I really just want them for picking up and moving around logs. Um, and I don't really need a grapple for that. Like I'm not, I'm not logging professionally. I'm just <laughs> making firewood uh, to burn in the house in winter. Um, so I could definitely get by, like I said, with just the clamp on fork. So that's probably going to be the route that I'm going to go. Um, yeah, everything fluid filter wise is, is fantastic. Like I said, I really just have to go through the wiring on this and that's about it. There's no leaks on this thing anywhere to speak of. Um, except for um, the valve, the loader valve here. There's a couple of the, um, actually I think it's just, just this one. Just this one uh, um, quick coupler is leaking a little bit right there at the bottom. So I may grab one of those and just replace it. Well, I will. I just don't know when. Um, yeah, other than that, that's all I really have to do to this thing. Um, once it gets a little bit warmer outside, I'm going to take it out, pressure wash it, um, and just do a little touch up with the paint. I'm going to pull the battery tray out and um, yeah, just kind of anywhere that it's rusty like that, probably just touch it up. I'm not going to pull up the entire thing apart, take it all down to bare metal and repaint it. That would just be a giant waste of time. Um, even though part of me wants to do that, I'm really looking for something here that I can use um, around my house and my property. Um, that's 
more practical than it is, uh, I guess, a showpiece. Although, for some reason, that always seems to be the first thing I want to do is, oh, I want to make it look brand new. But um, as I get older, I'm starting to realize that that's not always the best course of action. You usually just end up wasting time and money and end up with something that isn't any more reliable than it was when I bought it. Um, so that's kind of the main focus here is just to go through um, all of the major mechanical and electrical systems, make sure it's going to work the way I want it to, and then put it to work. Um, so uh, with that, I will get the camera set up in the tripod here and go back to work. All right, a uh, quick little update here. Um, I tried doing the time-lapse thing with my other phone filming, and as I suspected, it has memory issues, so unfortunately that did not get filmed, or at least not all of it, but I will bring you up to speed with where I'm at currently, and I guess in the future I'll have to figure something else out for um, filming uh, time-lapse situations. Um, but anyway, so I wasn't planning on having to do this, but oh well, this is just how it goes. Um, had to fully remove the fuel tank. And, uh, I mean, this entire entire area here was just full of mouse nests. At first I was thinking it was actually maybe like a chipmunk or something like that, because it was just, it was huge. But um, judging by the teeth marks on the wires and everything, it had to be, had to be mice. But uh, for the most part, it's all out now. I got like a full... <laughs> Full garbage bag or full plastic bag of it, and like a couple more dust pans full of mouse nest in the garbage can over there. Um, for the most part, it's all out though. Um, a while down the road, I'm going to pull this all apart again and actually pressure wash it. Um, probably clean up some of those rusty spots and paint them. I might get a new set of hold down straps for the fuel tank. Um, most of the connections here, uh, the wires on these connectors are fine. Um, these here you can see are not fine, so I will be replacing those. Um, luckily up to the plug is fine, so I'm just going to snip these here and here and then replace the wire. Um, just solder in some new wire. Um, other than that, those are all pretty much good. I think there's another spot yeah, right there that's going to have to be replaced. Um, and then there's one like little jumper wire here. This must be um, the 750 and the 650 were pretty much the same tractor. I think they used the same wiring harness. I'm pretty sure this would have been something for the optional front PTO um, on the 650. And I'm not sure if that was an option on the 750. I think on the two wheel drive 750s, it was an option as well. But um, anyway, I think that's why that's jumpered there. I could be completely wrong, but that's just a guess. Um, just got done cleaning out the inside of the dash. Uh, this is the upper portion uh, that would cover the fuel tank over there. Um, and same thing in here. Um, this is just garbage. This needs to be replaced. Um, this wire, I'll probably just pull this out, put in a whole new piece of wire. This one I can save, thankfully. Um, so I'm just going to... Um, Cut it right there and then solder in new wires and I'll probably just get rid of this plug and do uh, just male female connectors on both ends and plug it in that way because this is garbage. And I don't really feel like trying to find a new one so, you know, wiring's wiring as long as you do it right so you don't need this. You can just use uh, male and female connectors. So that's the plan. Uh, got a little bit more stuff to get out around the tack there and everything else but um, yeah, it's coming along pretty good. Uh, I did purchase some um, hydraulic lines, and naturally, as I <laughs> suspected, I bought the wrong size. Um, I think these are 3 eighths, and I bought half inch, but I will have to um, take a look. I don't know a ton about hydraulics. Um, I mean, I understand the principles and everything, but um, as far as like styles of fittings and whether these are high-pressure fittings or just normal JIC, I, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I'm assuming they're not crazy high pressure fittings i'm pretty sure they're just they are just normal uh jic like flare fittings um, but i haven't taken any of them apart to see um so i'm probably going to crack one of these loose take it off and then probably just bring it right into the store with me so i don't make that same mistake again buy the wrong ones uh, but thankfully i only live about 10 minutes from the store anyway so not that big of a deal <sighs> well, other than that just have a lot of cleaning to do and, man, if this thing wasn't a diesel, and if this was like a, 
a gas engine, it probably wouldn't have started. It probably wouldn't run. Usually that's kind of the way those things go. Um, you know, once you have a short in one wire, then that somehow affects the ignition system and then you end up with a vehicle that has no spark. So, um, but thank God this is a diesel, still runs great. And as far as I can tell, this has been the only issue um, with this tractor so far. Um, but kind of still early to say that. I haven't really used it for much, but um, once I get all the wiring redone, I think it's going to be pretty solid. So we'll keep going here. All right, it's Thursday night. Uh, I've been getting out to the shop every night after work uh, this week. Work's been kind of slow um, because of the whole coronavirus thing, but that's all right. <laughs> means I have more time to spend out here. Uh, anyway, I have all the hydraulic lines on the loader replaced, as you can see. Didn't have to have anything custom made. Um, they were all standard lengths that I could get at Tractor Supply, so that was kind of nice. Um, I did make these a little bit longer than the ones that were on there just to um, kind of give me a little bit more room when taking the loader off and putting it back on. Um, all the joints are pretty good. I'm hoping that nothing leaks, but I'm sure sure something will. Just have to get it back on there and uh, test it out. But um, Got the hood looking a little bit better. I pounded some of the dents out of it. I'm really not too worried about it, though, like I said. Um, didn't paint it yet, but I will probably, um, before too long, uh, get just get that touched up. I don't think I'm going to go too crazy with it, but I do want to get that touched up just so it doesn't rust. Um, I will paint that green, unlike I did this here. This was um, where this is where the fuel tank sits, and this is where that massive mouse nest was. Um, and because of the moisture that the mice brought in there, and uh, um, just all the material holding actual moisture, um, it's got kind of rusty. But I just cleaned it up and um, put some of that real thick Rust-Oleum anti-rust paint on there. Um, so I'm not worried about that at all. I mean, the gas tank sits in there, so I don't really care what, or gas tank, fuel tank, whatever, sits in there. Um, so I don't really care how it looks. As long as it's not going to rust, that's fine. Um, I have the uh, loader controls uh, about as good as they're going to get without replacing uh, these uh, links right here. Um, before, this was super sloppy. I think I, I think I filmed it off to take a look, but um, anyway, it's because this bolt down in here um, was completely missing, so the um, loader valve itself wasn't fully supported. Um, so this bracket is supposed to be bent like this. Uh, the hole lines up, I have that bolted in there, so this is rock solid now. Um, just because uh, the pins and these links are kind of not, not the... Um, cylinders on the valve uh, themselves but the pins like this pin here and uh, that pin there um, and these links are kind of wallowed out um, there's a little bit of slop in them I got this top one it's not it's not bad it's not bad at all the bottom one's a little bit more sloppy but it's a hell of a lot better than it was um, before it wouldn't uh, wouldn't even hold the um, Ah, before it wouldn't even um, hold the float. Uh, there was so much slop here that when you would push this lever in uh, for the float function, um, this would just slop back and it would release the detent on that spool and it would just pop right back. Um, so at least that's working now. Um, and like I said, before there was just a ton of movement in the valve itself and now it's, now it's pretty solid. Battery charger is beeping at me over there. Um, I do have the battery. I'll just going to keep it on the charger overnight because um, I'm planning to put this back together tomorrow night. Tomorrow is Friday. Uh, and that battery was maybe 50% when I took it out of here. Um, so I kind of assumed there may be a charging issue with this. But um, once I get it all back together and running, uh, we'll find out. But um, I painted the exhaust stack um, just because it was getting kind of rusty. I didn't do the muffler, but... I might still I have a lot of time, so um, I just want to get it back together and run it. I went through it, greased everything, um, 
the hydraulic lines for the power steering are okay for right now, but I do want to get those replaced in maybe the next year or so. I don't know of any place around me that makes custom hydraulic lines, um, but there's got to be one somewhere, so I'll just have to, I don't know, I'll have to look around, but um, that's part of the reason that I went with just buying the standard sizes from uh, Tractor Supply too. I mean, like I said, thankfully it worked out, but um, what else did I do here? Um, whoever owned this before me had the um, wires switched around for the uh, over temp and the oil pressure. Um, so when you would start it up, the uh, over temp light would come on, you know, when you turn the key on, then go off, obviously. But I mean, it's smart enough to figure that out <laughs> while I was uh, testing the tractor out and driving it around because, you know, you turn the key on, the over temp light would come on immediately. Um, you'd fire it up and it would go off. So it I was just like, yep, okay, obviously there's a wire cross somewhere, and that's all that it was. They had um, uh, the wire for the overtemp uh, sensor was down on the oil pressure switch and vice versa. So I just switched those back around. I had to solder a new connector on the end here for this uh, wire because it was nice and almost broken off. The furnace is going to kick on here in a second. Um, what else did I do? That was about it as far as the wiring went. I just kind of cleaned up the way that some of these were routed down here and it's still not perfect. So this is the wire right here uh, that should have 12 volts DC at it um, to charge the battery when the engine is running. Uh, I don't know how old this alternator is, but it's fairly new. It's got to be fairly new. It doesn't have green paint on it like everything else, so obviously that's been replaced. Um, but this is an AC alternator. Uh, produces AC current, comes out, gets rectified into DC, uh, and then comes back and it essentially ends up right here at this green wire. I don't know why this plug is here, um, but it is there. So, you know, that's not a thing about it. I really should just take this out of the, out of here and just solder these together. I, I have no idea why that's there, but uh, until I you know, get the voltmeter out and actually make sure that there is current there uh, with the engine running, I'm not going to worry about it. But anyway, like I was saying, there should be 12 volts DC there, which is going to charge the battery. And I kind of suspect there's an issue there, but um, I won't find out until I get it back together and get it running. Uh, everything else up here, I think I already talked about how uh, the mice had the uh, wires kind of chewed up and everything. That's all back together. Uh, the only other thing I did was just clean up the gas tank straps with just a wire brush and then put some more of that real thick anti-rust paint on there. Really not concerned with you know how they looked, I just wanted to get the massive like heavy scale off of there. But as you can see, there's still some pitting and stuff, but not a big deal. Um, the fuel tank itself cleaned up really nice. Um, I've been using the, uh, what is it? It's like lacquer thinner and um, boiled linseed oil. I mix that in like a, I think it's like two parts boiled linseed oil to one part um, lacquer thinner. I could be wrong on that, but you can find that on the internet anywhere. Anyway, it's, it's a mixture of those two things. Uh, you wipe it onto anything plastic that's faded, and it comes right back to like the natural color, um, or the original color, I should say. I did that on this four-wheeler, on the plastics on this, and um, yeah, believe it or not, that is the exact original color. It looks perfect. It looks more pink on the camera than it does in real life, but it's actually a, an orange. Um, but anyway. Um, other than that, like I said, I just went through, uh, greased everything. Uh, gotta gotta make sure your your pins and ball joints are greased. Uh, yeah, and then I guess once that paint dries, um, I can start putting this back together. I should have the majority of it back together tomorrow night. I probably won't put the loader on until Saturday morning though. It's supposed to rain all weekend long, so I'll probably end up getting this back together and uh, spending the weekend editing this video. So, all right, that's it for now. Well, she's back together. Buttoned everything up tonight. Tonight is Friday night. Uh, put the loader back on. Had a bit of a time getting it back on, but. Um, once I remembered what I was doing, it wasn't wasn't too bad, but I gotta figure out the right way to remove that. I know it's, I don't think it's technically a quick attach loader. 
Um, but I don't know, this is my first loader tractor, so I'm still learning the ins and, ins and outs of it. Um, but all of my connections for the new hydraulic lines are leak leak free. Uh, so that's that's good. I was worried about that. I uh, had some worries when it came to routing uh, this line right there on both sides. Um, just because of the way it comes in here between uh, the loader frame and the loader itself. But I think it's going to be all right. Um, I ran it up and down a bunch of, bunch of times and there's not really a whole lot of rubbing that's happening. So I think it should be all right. Um, all the new hoses up here are a little bit longer than they needed to be. But like I said, I kind of did that um, for ease taking the loader off. And it's still, I mean, on video and just standing here looking at it, it kind of looks like a rat's nest where it is fairly organized. Um, there are two two lines here that I did not replace. Uh, this one and that one just because, um, like I said earlier, I bought tractor supply out of lines uh, when I was there. So I'm um, waiting for them to restock and I'll just pick those up and uh, change those out. I'm still kind of confused as to why this block is even here. Um, you've got, you know, two two lines that come off of the loader and just plug directly into the loader valve. And then you've got the other two that come off, go into this block and then go into the valve. I really don't understand that. I don't know if this is for like, if you could add a third function here or something like that, but I don't really think so. That's just, I, I have to look into that some more because if that, you know, doesn't really have a practical purpose, I'm, probably just going to take it off and then instead of buying new lines these are long enough i'll just run these directly into the loader valve i really i don't know i don't know what that's for but um bleeding the lines went great um <laughs> when i started doing it i forgot to pop the cap off of uh the hydraulic fluid reservoir there and um well thankfully i caught it before i caused any damage but you know if you don't have that uh, unscrewed then the air really has no place to go and you kind of just end up pressurizing the case running the pump but um, I'm sure if you did that long enough you could probably cause some damage but um, I don't think it's really capable of creating that much pressure that you'd like blow it up but if anything you might just blow the cap right off I, I have no idea but anyway that went well like I said um, I have my lights working properly now when I turn the key on um, Oil pressure, as you can see, is now oil pressure instead of being temperature. Um, I don't know if this light... I'm assuming that this charging light is supposed to be on when the engine is not charging. I don't really know how that works, though. Unless it's supposed to be on all the time when the engine is charging the battery. I don't, I don't know. But anyway, it's off when the engine is running, which I think is how it's supposed to be. Um, meaning that the engine is charging the battery, but I have to put a meter on it yet and make sure that I do actually have my 12 volts there, but um, the wiring is definitely a hell of a lot better than it was. Um, the lights are actually bright now instead of just being barely lit. Uh, I have my light for my tack as you can see now. Um, headlights aren't working yet because the bulbs are burnt out, but uh, I got flashers. That should be flashers in. Wait a minute. Okay, there we go. Flashers and tail light. And then I think the last one here is the flood lamp. Nope, wrong again. There's the flood lamp. And that's actually nice and bright now, too. Because I mean, it worked before, and I thought the bulb was bad or something like that because it was really dim, but now this is nice and bright. I had plans to replace that with, like, an LED, but this is, I think, going to be plenty bright for what I need. But anyway, that's kind of nice that I actually have all the lights that I'm supposed to have, with the exception of the headlights, but those will get replaced, like I said. Um, 
yeah, no leaks on it anywhere that I can tell. Um, I'll just have to let it sit overnight. What you see underneath it right now is just from when I was doing the lines on the loader. Um, I think I'm going to do a valve adjustment on it or just check the valve clearances. It sounds kind of ticky. Um, but then again, this is my first diesel, so and I know they make tend to make a little bit more noise, but uh, it's just one of those things that I like to do on on all my engines. After I, you know, any, anything I buy used, I just really like to go through it and make sure that it's gonna, you know, serve me well and there's not going to be any surprises. But um, I'm super excited about this. Uh, very, <laughs> I guess, proud to have it. Um, like I said, something that I've wanted since I was a little kid. So. Once I get another uh, camera going, I'll actually film these things as I'm doing them. Um, be a little bit more entertaining, but uh, yeah, I, like I said, I'm, I'm I'm pretty confident in this, and uh, I'm kind of just <laughs> blathering on right now. It's been a long week, but it's supposed to rain all weekend long, um, so I probably won't get this out of the garage at all. Um, if anything, I might come back in here uh, Saturday and just um, uh, just do a few more things on it. Like I said, check the valve clearances, and then I really I want to make sure it's charging the battery. But and I think I, I need to re redo the ground. Uh, that's one thing that I didn't do. I forgot to do that until I got back on it. And um, every once in a while, you'll have to turn the key twice to get the starter to engage. I don't know what's up with that. To me, that kind of sounds like a bad ground, but it could be any number of things. But um, sounds like the government's going to be sending us some money, so I think that sounds like it's going to be a, a good excuse to get some new tires on this bad boy. And then uh, after that, I'm just going to go through the bucket. This is all stuff that I'm going to do too as I'm using it, so this, as far as I'm concerned, this is ready for service right now. Um, first thing I'm going to do with it probably is use it to rebuild my chimney and you're probably like well how the hell are you going to use a tractor to rebuild the chimney but it, just the loader on it just to get stuff off and on the roof um, instead of hauling five gallon pails of mortar and brick up and down a ladder it'll just be nice to fill the bucket up with this and just bring it up to roof level and and uh, taking down the, the old sex, section of chimney um, you know I can just take it off uh, piece by piece, running over to the bucket instead of trying to chuck it off the roof and potentially hitting something. But um, just endless possibilities for this. Super excited to have it around the house here. It's going to be great. And with that, uh, I'll shut up. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out with me. Um, any questions about the tractor? Anything that I did to it at all? And as always, just feel free to leave me a comment. Um, not an expert by any means but the more I do this stuff, the better I get at it. So thanks for watching. See you in the next one.